birth. Um, we now know that using water for labor and birth shortens women's labor and reduces the need for interventions. This, there's evidence for this. Women have actually known this for years and years who've been using water for labor, but only recently, in the last decade or so, has there been published research which has then gone on to influence standards for maternity care in Britain. So for example, now we know um, that most hospitals in the UK are, are trying to increase their water provision for women using water for labor because of this research. Contrast that to epidural, where pain relief for epidural is 100% for most women. However, there are known risks for both mother and baby, not only by the administration of the epidural, but in the knock-on effects from an epidural. However, there are no known risks for using water for labor for mother or for baby. It all comes down to four simple physiological elements of a woman's labor that are greatly supported by the use of water. And I'll talk through what those are now, and then we'll get in the pool and have a look at how the water, um, even though I won't have water in the pool, how the water can support and enhance those four physiological characteristics. Okay, so we'll use my pelvis here, my model pelvis, to illustrate this fact. If you can think of a bowling ball, a seven or eight pound bowling ball, the weight of that, I'm not equating a baby to a bowling ball, but if you think about the weight of a bowling ball and how the weight of that needs to come through the bones of the mother's pelvis, um, what do you think is going to be most efficient in helping that baby come out? If the woman is on her back and she has seven or eight pounds that she needs to get through the pelvis this way, What's, is it more efficient for her to be in this position or in this position? Obviously, this position, because you've got the weight uh, working with gravity. So gravity is assisting with the, with the actual weight of the baby coming down. Um, so first of all, being in an upright position is most probably one of the most main elements in helping women have a most efficient labor. Um, secondly, we've got... Um, we've got some flexibility on the back of the pelvis here. This is called the sacrum. And this bone here is actually flexible. So if you can illustrate this on your own body, if you find on your body your symphysis pubis, your pubic bone here, which is down here in the front of your, of your bones, and then if you find on the back here your coccyx, which is your little tailbone, and if you find those two bones on your body here, and just note the difference, in space between your two hands. What's the space between your two hands? You might say it's maybe about eight inches or so, maybe seven inches. Now if you just slightly tilt forward, what you'll find is that your hands will move further apart. So by moving further apart, you're illustrating that by forward tilting your pelvis, you are increasing the space in the outlet of your pelvis. Okay, so just there we've, we've noticed two things already that help a baby be born more efficiently by having the mother be in an upright position so the weight is working with gravity and by forward tilting you've just opened up the pelvis a little bit more probably about 30 percent some people say in terms of space of the outlet. The third element of an efficient labor is an ability for a woman to move and the movement is actually jiggling the baby out. The baby's not doing a slam dunk through the pelvis it's not coming straight on through. What he's doing is doing um, sort of a journey, finding the path of least resistance through the bones of the pelvis. Um, if you look at a baby's head here on my doll, you can see that his head has a wide part to it and his shoulders have a wide part to it, which are at angles like this. And basically, the, the pelvis has a similar angle to it with a wide part at the top and a wider part perpendicular to that at the bottom. The baby has to come through the pelvis, finding the path of least resistance through those bones and basically corkscrewing himself through the pelvis to be born. So lots of wiggling, lots of going back and forth, asymmetrical rocking, lifting up her legs, doing things like that are all going to increase the flexibility of the pelvis and help jiggle the baby out. You don't know where that baby's head is in the rotation through his through the pelvis, but you can bet that if you're doing a little bit of this and giving an extra centimeter here, centimeter there, ooh, there goes a shoulder, ooh, here goes another shoulder, and out comes that baby much more efficiently. The final ingredient for, um, for making an efficient labor is honoring the hormones that make the labor process most efficient. The main hormone in labor 
called oxytocin brings on labor contractions. It's actually the same hormone that you have when you have sex. So if you can imagine the environment that you have around you for most people when they have sex, safe, private, dimly lit, um, like I said, most people, um, then those are the same elements that a woman is probably going to have find her oxytocin levels thrive in during her labor. She needs to feel safe, private, secure, um, any sense of vulnerability, anxiety, stress, embarrassment, shame, any of the things that would probably shut down lovemaking can also shut down or slow down labor. So when a woman's in water, all of those elements are great, all the positive uh, benefits um, which sustain the flow of oxytocin are enhanced, whereas the negative ones are, are dissipated. And I'll illustrate that now by getting in the pool and showing how these four elements come together for a more efficient labor. Okay, we'll now illustrate how all four of these elements um, are supported by the use of water in labor. First of all, just the act of getting into the pool can help her labor. Lifting her legs up high and over the side of the pool um, causes a little bit of that jiggling to occur. And when you're talking about a baby who's at, at the brink of being able to come through the pelvis, that little extra bit of give um, with a high leg lift such as this um, can really make a difference. A woman who's in labor naturally um, finds a forward leaning position comfortable. It means that the baby is off of her spinal cord, she's leaning forward, and so naturally her body is taking the shape of one of the most efficient ways to give birth. A forward leaning position, giving that maximum space of opening up her pelvis, and also upright so the weight of the baby is allowing some gravity to help bring the baby out. In a birthing pool, she can lean her head against the side. She can use exterior handles to grip onto. In between contractions, she might want to rest back, lean back and relax. Um, again, using handles on the side of the pool to assist her coming back and forth. Water causes weightlessness, and the buoyancy that weightlessness allows means that she can change positions in labor very easily without having to negotiate with gravity. She can lift her leg up to the side to see if perhaps that change in position eases some discomfort. Um, she can also be rolling around within the pool here. She can do all sorts of positions that will help um, jiggle the baby out, but without causing her any extra stress or um, needing to use any extra energy because the buoyancy of the water allows her to change positions without having to use her own energy to do so. Finally, um, within the birthing pool, she feels like this is a very safe, private space. Um, women often find that the edge of the pool is where the rest of the world begins and she's in her own very safe place here. Perhaps her partner might want to get in with her or she might want to be on her own. But that greatly enhanced sense of privacy um, allows her to feel um, safe and so oxytocin flows more readily when she's in that kind of a space. Um, getting in and out of the pool into the warm water can also cause a flow of oxytocin. Just like when you get into a warm bath at night, you get that first nice tingly sensation as you step into a warm bath. And that's the same with using water for labor. You get into the bath or into the pool for the first time and women often talk about having this sense of this sort of rush of tinglies. And that's um, oxytocin also um, being more enhanced because she's gotten into a birthing pool. So if we add up those four elements again, let's just recap. We've got a woman who's upright, forward leaning, able to move around, and have a higher sustenance of oxytocin during her labor. All those things together make for a shorter, more efficient labor, which reduces her need for interventions.